one of the workflows I can demonstrate even right now actually is uh, I'll basically model something in CAD, go through, make a bracket, bring it into solid thinking, model it in like, and so solid thinking is a uh, basically a FEA structural optimization software where I can both do, why am I talking? Let me just do it. <laughs> That's way easier. And so, you know, let me just hide these things to get them out of the way. Solid, oops. So let's make basically a little bridge structure or something like that. And so I, a lot of times I'll model it in CAD. It is a free plugin for Rhino. I don't know. I know it's trying to like go farther. There are the equivalents of what, like of what Grasshopper would be, but in SolidWorks. And so that's the uh, I personally grew up with Rhino, and so that's would be my my forte. But I know it, it applies to a lot of different. I know. Uh, wow, I did not draw a straight plane there. But I know uh, like Autodesk Softwares has a Dynamo, which is their equivalent of it. And so there's a lot of different different ways of basically adding more, more usability to these softwares. And so let's offset that surface by some amount, scale one. Sorry, just making a quick structure here to, to bring into SolidWorks, not SolidWorks, Solid Thinking, which is another one of my like favorite softwares. So now we've got this structure. This could be, say, this is basically just trying to stop this lower thing from bending, maybe. That's, what we're, that's the goal here. Just make a really quick CAD model of something. Export this as a step file because solid thinking like step files. I'm just going to call it one. And then let me open solid thinking. And I just downloaded their new try or their new uh, newest version like two days ago. So there's still a lot of buttons I haven't quite figured out. I was working on the 2014 version, and so this is the I figured I would I would start learning the new one, this one. Still on their uh, their free trial. But file import, let's bring in this file. I apparently didn't export the top part. Is that also an open falling surface? Yeah. Everything needs to be closed. That's also like a closed poly surface. That's definitely very helpful. If you punch a hole in something, you can normally fix it in Magix later or some other mesh modeling software, but I know a lot of a lot of like open poly surfaces create issues when you're trying to boolean objects together later. I've definitely spent days trying to stick objects together just because there was some tiny little mistake somewhere that just caused the software to just crash every single time I boolean things together. Before I learned about the workflow of moving like moving into a mesh modeler and then just basically mashing everything together, which I tends to work a little bit better or at least is a little bit faster for me. And so with this software, I can basically both run, oh, this screen is small, structure. I can run, I can analyze different structures on here. Let me put some loads on this guy. And so I'm going to put some supports on the corners. Oops, didn't mean to. Did 
delete. Take one of those off. So now we're applying some, so those are supports. Let's apply some pressure to that surface of 10 pascals. Let's say this material is made of steel. That's fine. And then I've got to give it some shape controls as well. And these are for symmetry, and I, that's not symmetrical, and I don't think it's not the world's most symmetrical object, but let's see if that works. And so I'm literally going to now click Analyze Run at 0 .005 meters. Let's click Run. And so these now take a couple minutes to think while it's doing its FEA analysis, or in this case it's optimizing it, but I get a nice FEA analysis like color map out of this process, which is super nice. And so it also lets, lets me see how the object would flex or create other, other shapes. Not flex, but it'll do a nice animation for it in the end. But it does take maybe three minutes to think, something like that, depending on how complex my loads are. I can definitely use this software to create ridiculously complex loading scenarios that take, we did a, we optimized a skateboard and some Boeing air brackets and some other, like, can't talk about the, the things we do for aerospace as much, but we'll do the same thing on a different project that we can talk about. So for instance, we did a skateboard where we basically optimized a skateboard for all the different forces that a sort of the rider who was one of our employees figured he would be applying on while doing different tricks and, and different things. And so we got actually a, and I think I have internet, so. 3D printed skate, S-K-A-T-E-B-O-A-R-D. No, Google. It says I have internet. Oh well. And that's done thinking, why don't I have internet? If you Google on your phone, optimize skateboard, it totally comes up if you're curious. It's not the, uh, I think I might have it somewhere. Yeah, weird. Check your firewall or proxy. But, so while that's thinking, we have, I think I might even have examples, I do. So this is the example of like an optimized topology from solid thinking or another software, I don't know if this was done specifically on solid thinking, but a lot of times you would then, so the solid thinking will spit out basically a mesh or a NURB surface that looks something along these lines, and this has been optimized for mass reduction in this case, so this was basically taking what was, I wonder if I have one of the original files. No, oh, so this is another example. The original file is in the back, basically a block of steel that was hogged out with a CNC machine run through an optimization software, we basically got this new, much more intricately designed, much harder to machine part, but this part is stronger, lighter, better, faster, strong, like the full, the full realm of things. One of the issues we have slightly learned in is that when you optimize something for a really particular set of loads, like for instance, that bracket, it works really well in that one case, but if I come up to it and like smack it with a hammer from the left side of it all of a sudden and put a huge dent in it, that may throw off the entire system, and so in some cases where you're expecting kind of random applications of force, like if you're going to Mars and you wanna like have a really optimized bracket, but you don't know all of the possible things you might run into on Mars, maybe it's not best to optimize to the nth degree and get it so it weighs, like it's the perfect application for holding, like moving your arm on your robotic arm or something like that. Maybe you take two steps back and you add some extra supports in there, basically as redundancies. And so a lot of older, older design techniques basically add in, though the parts waste a lot of material, have a lot of redundancy in them. So like you can walk up to like a solid piece of steel and hit it with a hammer as much as you want, and it's probably not gonna really detrimentally affect the overall structure. But with a really optimized structure, if you were to dent some of those columns, maybe it might actually seriously affect the overall structure. And so this is, the, this is what solid thinking thought would be the best scenario for this load case. And so, and I can even scroll through it depending on what I, what I feel is, is right or based on some other, uh, and this was for uh, the stiffness. I'm basically trying to make this bottom, this bottom block as stiff as possible with the upper structure. And so I can, I can go through here and be like, I actually like it right about there. 
And if I click Analyze, it'll of course think for a little bit more, but then it'll give me a nice FEA analysis of this new structure I have created. And so, and then from that analysis, I can be like, ah, there's some weak points in here. Maybe I go back and in CAD. So that once this is done uh, thinking, and this is a mesh, you can kind of, I can tell it's a mesh. You can tell because it's got these nasty, like not very smooth surfaces. And so a lot of times, oh, what did I click on? Where did my analysis go? Analyze, run. There it is. View. And so I can look at lots of different, or even animate it. And so this is like an exaggeration, which helps you kind of understand basically the forces I'm trying to apply on it. But it works really well to figure out like what exactly, you can see the, uh, the mesh deforming on those surfaces or warping around it. And so let me stop this animation. And we can go, let's go with displacement or percent yield. This one isn't actually, I guess I, when, I, uh, when I picked my optim optimized structure, I was too much, so let's bring it down to like there. And then I guess if I click Analyze again, it'll take some time. But, so this is, I've got this part here, which is great. Like this is now a much stronger structure. I can still slide whatever piece of other CAD I had in here. So this still maintains the bounding box that I gave it. So like the, uh, my original design workspace, not this, uh, the software basically gives it, makes it so I can work, I can basically optimize this structure here. And so it'll basically use the, this is a bounding box to run a new structure through it. And so it'll it decreases the volume of that structure quite a lot while, in, while maintaining the same stiffness or a particular stiffness that I want. In this case, I think it was 30% uh, is what I gave it. Let's see. 30%, yeah, of the original mass. And so that was, but I can get like, maybe I want it to have 5% of the original mass while still maintaining the same stiffness. So it'll give me a new structure that is based on those parameters. But so, let me get to here. File, where's my save as? STL, I like STLs, no one else does. <laughs> 